Okay, so this is General Pharmacology Math Packet Letter B Explanation with Mrs. McGee. So we're going to talk about dosage calculation and conversions. Um, dosage calculation is when you determine the correct dosage of a medication when the available medication doesn't match. So if I need to give somebody 650 milligrams of Tylenol, but I only have a 325 milligram <clears throat> tablet, I know that I need to give them two of those tablets. That's what dosage calculation is. And then conversion is moving from one label to another label, such as moving from milliliters to teaspoons or milligrams to grams or vice versa. In your packet, these pages are, again, out of order, and I'm sorry, um, pages 223 to 299 and 154 and 120. Ratio and proportion is my preferred method of um, figuring out nursing math. We can use it for any situation, and I'm going to show you that. And it's a concept of solving for x that shouldn't be new to you because you should have learned it in Algebra 1 and reinforced it in Algebra 2, and we're going to reinforce it again. Um, you set up the problem, you cross multiply and divide. I know you've heard that uh, cross multiply and divide before. So this is an example from the book. Um, so we have a package that says we have eight milligrams in one ml, but our order says that we need 10 milligrams. So we set that up as eight milligrams over one ml, and 10 milligrams over X mLs because we need to know how many mLs do we give for 10 milligrams. So this is showing that we cross multiply and divide. When we cross multiply, the eight and the X become combined and the 10 comes on the other side. So in order to remove the X from the eight, we have to divide both sides by eight. So X stands alone and 10 divided by eight is one, 0.25. So our answer is 1.25 milliliters. Here's the example number two. So we have a label here. So we're going to, in addition to doing the math, be able to read the label correctly. Our label says we have 150 milligrams in one ml. Okay. So our order says clindamycin, 225 milligrams every six hours IV. So now we do the math. If the order states administer clindamycin, 225 milligrams every six hours IV, and our package states clindamycin, 150 milligrams per milliliter, we have to set it up. In a ratio and proportion, it would be 225 milligrams over X, because that's what we're solving for. That's what our order says that we don't know the milliliters for. Our package tells us that we have 150 milligrams in one milliliter. We cross multiply and we get 225 equals 150 X. Sorry. So in order to get that X isolated by itself, we have to divide by 150 on both sides of the equation and we get 1.5 mLs as an answer. Okay, so get yourself a piece of paper and you're going to write this one down. Tigan. We have um, trimethobenzamide HCl, 100 milligrams per milliliter. The order says we need to give 0 0.3 grams every 24 hours, I am times six days. So this adds an extra step. We have to be able to convert from grams to milligrams or milligrams to grams. That's why you need to memorize those conversion factors that I gave you. So here's the math. You've got this written down. The order states administer Tigan 0.3 grams every 24 hours 
for six days. So that's how we know what we need to convert to. If the order says grams, we need to figure it out in grams and not confuse ourselves even more. And the package states there's 100 milligrams per ml. There's our extra step. So here's our conversion. I've got it written out here in a ratio and proportion. If you're super good at math, you know how to do that by just dividing. But if you want to set it up as a ratio and proportion, which is my preferred method of all the math, you write one gram over a thousand milligrams equals X grams over 100 milligrams. And then you cross multiply and divide that answer out. We end up getting 0.1 grams. So um, if you learned how to do the division and multiplication steps to move through conversions, that's fine with me as long as you understand what you're doing and get the correct answer. So we're setting up the problem with our first answer inside of it. We're saying 0.3 grams over X mLs. We need to find what our order wants us to find. And then we have what the actual package said what we have determined, 0.1 grams over 1 ml. Again, we cross multiply and divide. Cross multiplication gives us 0.3 equals 0.1 x. In order to get that x to stand alone, we have to divide both sides of the equation with 0.1. Our answer ends up being x equals 3 mLs. All right, so if you didn't understand what I said about the conversions, I'm going to go over that now. Remember, you have to memorize those conversion factors. Um, some of them, you know, you can kind of fudge and maybe know one of them and figure out the other one, but there are some that you just have to know. Um, you have to learn to convert using one of these two methods. So, we're going to focus on this example, milliliters to teaspoons. Okay, um, this is important because your orders are going to be in milliliters. Your doctors, providers, whoever they are, are going to write those in milliliters. But your parents are going to call you on the phone and say, I don't know how to give my child 30 mLs of anything. I don't know what an mL is, but I have teaspoons and I have this and I have that. And you're going to have to guide them how to take their medication correctly. That's why this is important. All right. So in order to convert, we need to know that. Um, and just FYI, there are some, um, a little bit of leeway between what you learn as far as some mLs to teaspoons and tablespoons, because some teaspoons and tablespoons are a little bit different. But the general rule is there are five mLs in one teaspoon. So that's our conversion factor. That's what the memorization is for this. You need to know that. And that equals our order. So we need that 30 mLs. Uh, we need to understand how many tablespoons or, or teaspoons, excuse me, um, are we going to tell this mom to give her kid. So we're going to set that up in the ratio and proportion. Then we're going to cross multiply over here. That gives us 30 equals 5x. In order to get the x to stand alone, we have to divide 5 on both sides. x equals 6 teaspoons. That is something that that mom can understand. Okay, so here's another common and we will be doing this a lot, conversion from pounds to kilograms. Here again, you have to know that conversion factor. These are going to be on your test. They're going to be on tests and tests and tests throughout this so that you memorize them. Um, the faster and quicker that you can commit them to memory and be able to use that information, the better off you'll be. So there are 2.2 pounds per kilogram. One easy way to remember that, or at least... A way that I try to remember it is that your pounds number is always going to be bigger. So if anybody ever asks your weight, tell them in kilograms because it's going to seem like you're skinnier. Okay, so you've memorized your conversion factor and we're going to start using that. Um, if you understand math really, really well and you know that all you need to do is divide 
195 by 2.2 to get the answer, you're welcome to do that. But if you cannot do that every time and understand it, please set up the problem in a ratio and proportion until you um, have that mastered. Sometimes I even forget, do I need to multiply here or divide it? And ratio and proportion keeps you from forgetting how to do it and making a very simple mistake when you could have just set up a problem and got it done. So we set it up by saying 2.2 pounds over 1 kilogram equals 195 pounds over X kilograms. That's what we're solving for. We need to know how many kilograms does 195 pounds make. So we cross multiply by and, and we get 195 equals 2.2x. So we have to get that x to stand alone and we do that by dividing by 2.2 on both sides. When we do that, our x ends up equaling 88.6 kilograms. And that is all of this video. Um, I've taught you how to convert and I have taught you hopefully how to make some dosage calculations. Remember um, your pages are wrong. They are pages 223 to 299 and 154 and 120. If you have any questions, feel free to email me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.